I figured I'd make a video uh, just basically on um, distributing and factoring because this is a spot where everybody from seventh grade to graduate school seems to forget every summer. Something happens and you just have to relearn this at the beginning of whatever math class it is that you're in. So I'll start with um, an illustration in red of the distributive property which basically says that I take what I've written as a huge capital A and I pair it with B and I pair it with C and I add them together. And the reason why I write a huge capital A is because I'm going to treat the entire X plus A as capital A. And then I'm going to distribute that to a little x and a little b. And the reason why I've picked X plus A times X plus B uh, will be evident shortly. This is uh, in contrast to what many of you have learned as FOIL, uh, which stands for first, outer, inner, last. Um, I don't really like that, not because it's wrong or anything, it's just it, it leads to too many mistakes, too much stuff that people do in their head. And if you think really carefully, it only applies to a binomial times a binomial. And if you don't understand what I mean, it would be a good thing for you to look up binomial and try to figure out what I meant. Anyway, the first step in distributing this is to simply copy over x plus a and x in the spot of a times b and copy over x plus b and whoops I'm already messing it up. Copy over uh, x plus a and b in the role of uh, a times c. Now I'm going to write that again x plus a times x <coughs> plus x plus a times b. Now I've got to distribute again. This time it's easier because there's only one term. x goes to x and gives me x squared. And then I have ax plus... Uh, I'm going to write the b on the left of the x. So I'll have bx and then I'll have ab. Now, a lot of you will say I can do something like combine like terms, whatever that means. But I think it's better to think about factoring x out on the right. This is the distributive property in reverse, because we can see that if I distributed x to the b and the a, it would become ax plus bx again. And the result is x squared plus a plus b times x plus ab. Now, let's say I wanted to use this to do something like factor uh, x squared minus x uh, minus 12. So I'll, I'll write a minus 1, which is the, the first order of business, since a minus x is really minus 1 times x. And I'd like to write this as x plus a times x plus b, for some a and some b. That's what it means to factor. Now, how can I pick an x plus a and an x plus b? Well, if we look at what we have here, 
we know that a times b has to be negative 12 and a plus b has to be negative 1. So a plus b equals negative 1 and a times b is negative 12. Now, <coughs> this is probably reminding you of something that you've learned, which is uh, you have to look for two numbers that multiply to give minus 12 or add to give minus 1. But you kind of forget which is which. Uh, you know, maybe they multiply to give minus 1 and add to give minus 12. Who knows? Um, now that we're down to adding to give minus 1 and multiplying to give minus 12, we basically just guess and check. And here, with a little practice, you can kind of do it in your head. Um, two numbers that give minus 12, uh, well, first of all, one of them has to be positive, and one of them has to be negative, because a positive times a negative is a negative, and a little bit of thought will convince you that uh, positive 3 times negative 4 will give us negative 12 and 3 plus negative 4 gives us negative 1. So that means we want x plus 3 and x plus negative 4 which you might write as x plus 3 times x minus 4. <coughs> now how can we check this? Um, one way to check it is to know that if I plug in 4, I get 0 here. So let's just see. If I plug in 4 to the original equation, I would get 16 minus 4 minus 12. And I get 0 again. Let's try plugging in minus 3. If I plug it into x plus 3 times x minus 4, I would get 0. And then up here I would get 9 plus 3 minus 12. Because negative 3 squared minus negative 3 minus 12 gives me 9 plus 3 minus 12. Just trying to illustrate how it's possible to use numbers to verify that your factoring is correct. So ultimately, we've written x squared minus 1x minus 12 as x plus 3 times x minus 4. Of course, you could even go about distributing x plus 3 times x minus 4 like we did here at the very beginning to check it. And I have successfully made a mess of the screen, but uh, hopefully you learned something.